Good morning. Welcome to Bethesda United Methodist Church. It is so good to see folks uh, returning to church for, for the first time in a long time. Welcome. So glad to see you all today. To those who are tuning in on, on media's uh, platforms, we're, we're glad that you're here as well. And uh, we, we pray God's blessings to always be upon you. Uh, what a day this is. Happy Mother's Day. You're welcome. And uh, this is a day where we honor our mothers. And I pray that, uh, that all of us would look fondly uh, upon those, those women who gave us life, a precious gift that God first created in us. So we, we thank you, Mom, everywhere. So, let us begin with prayer. Almighty and loving God, you have blessed us so. And we have gathered here, Lord, to praise you and to lift your name on high. Lord, clear our minds and our hearts from things that are going on in our world around us, things that would uh, bind us to this world Lord, in your spirit, free us so that we might sing praises to you, so that we might rejoice in the good news that we will hear today. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, and this opportunity to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. Won't you stand? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
As we have gathered in the house of our Lord to worship and praise God, it is good for us to be in community with one another so that there can be a binding of our hearts together so that we could be of one spirit, one mind, one voice together to God our Father. So let us bow. Let us go before our God in prayer. Oh, Lord, we're 
thankful for this day, as we are every day. But Lord, this day has special memory, for in this day we remember Mom. We know that Mom, spelled upside down, is wow. And without words, we fall short in describing how important our mothers are to us. It was of a mother's love that we were given life. And oftentimes a mother who held us when we were hurt, when we were crying. It was our moms who soothed our feelings, who laughed at our jokes when no one else would. It was our moms who played with us and shared time with us and worked hard to provide for us. To prepare meals for us. To show us what responsibility meant. To train us up. To be upright and upstanding people. in our world today. And so, Lord, we thank you for our mothers. For when we see our mothers, I pray, Lord, we get a glimpse of you. And what your love looks like. And so we say thank you. And Lord, we give you thanks for the church throughout the world, the body of Christ. For we know that we are a body built on a solid and firm foundation who is Jesus Christ our Lord. And that when we live in Christ, we live in you, Lord God. And when we live in you, we live in love. For that is who you are, dear God. And so we ask, Lord, your blessings upon the church throughout the world, not the institution, but the body. Oh, Lord, I pray that the church would always be on the move, a church militant on this earth so that we might be a church triumphant in the kingdom to come. Oh Lord, fill us with your spirit that we might reach out to friends and neighbors, strangers and enemies. That we would invite them and ask them, please, if, if you don't have a church, please come. Lord, we give you thanks for those who have come back today and for those who are continuing to come back each and every day. We do thank you, Lord, for social media that we didn't have just too long ago, but it's there today, making it possible for folks to attend even while they're away. But Lord, we do long for the day when we can all be together. And I thank you, Lord, for the ways that it's being made to happen now. Continue to bless us in those regards. Lord, for good news and wonderful blessings, we are thankful. We pray, Lord, watch over us in the circumstances of this life that 
those circumstances would not be burdens and weigh us down to where we have no hope of getting up again. But I pray for courage of faith and conviction of faith that we would arise above the ashes of this life, above the disasters of this world, beyond the embitterment of hearts of those who would seek to control, that would desire power more than, more than anything. Lord, help us to see beyond that. Help us to see who you are and to be thankful. Lord, we give you thanks for men and women who put their lives on the line every day when they leave their homes to protect us, to defend us, to stand in the gap And who say, nothing will harm you on my watch. We thank you, Lord, for those men and women. And we ask your Lord's protection upon them. Lord, be with them when they have to make snap decisions. That their decisions would be right decisions. That their actions would be seen in the light of truth. Yes, Lord, we know some make mistakes. Some with intention, but most without. But we do ask, Lord, your protection upon them, for they do a job that is honorable. And Lord, we give you thanks for the folks that we ask your blessings upon. We give you thanks, Lord, for good news. For test results that reveal no cancer. Thank you. For Mary Alice Myers, we lift her up. And Larry. And Tim, Tim Rupard. For Jay Moser, we lift up Debbie Dethridge and the, fed, the family of Betty Sutton. And Lord, place your hand over Lily and Chrissy and Jackson at this time, and May and Jim Purdy. And for Lane Wilkes, we lift them up to you, Lord. And for Pat Moore. For families who have lost loved ones and who grieve, we ask, Lord, your blessings to be upon them. And in all things, Lord, may we give you thanks. May we rejoice in your goodness of your love and the wonder of your grace. And as we are your children, Lord, we pray to you with one mind, with one heart, and in unison of voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. 
You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel alone. You need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light in the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, say. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, you can't feel it. Somebody testifies. If you believe it, if you receive it, you can't feel it. Somebody testifies. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. I can have the kids come up. Come on. All right. What, 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 what? All right. What day is today? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. That's right. Hey, John. What do I have here? What kind of flowers? Um, roses, I think. No, not Colored roses. Flowers. Huh? No, they're yellow. They're, no, they're, well, I have a red, I have a red flower and a white flower, but these are carnations. Carnations are the traditional flower of Mother's Day. 
Now, why do you think we have different colors? Why white? Why red? And pink. Well. Because everybody's a different color. Because everybody's a little different. <laughs> no. Because that's we, the color of the church. Color of the church? No. We give red flowers to mothers who are alive. We give white flowers in memories of mothers who have passed, who have died. Okay? Remember? We can remember it this way. Red means the blood is still flowing. White means the blood is still. Okay? Alive and who have died. But we still honor our mothers. Why do we honor our mothers? Because they raised us. They raised us. They gave you life. Life is a precious gift from God. And mothers delivered that gift to us. And it is so cool. So today, what we're going to do is... Where's Vicky, there you go. Okay, what we're going to do, we have, we have five, okay? John, will you help us to hand out flowers today? Okay, good deal. All right, here's what we're going to do. Miss Vicky's going to take a bucket of flowers, and I'm going to take a bucket of flowers, and we're going to give a flower to every mom here today, okay? Now, we don't have a whole lot of white ones, but we got a bunch of good pink ones. So, okay, a couple of y'all go with Miss Vicky, and come, y'all come all here with me, okay? Are uh, you coming with me, man? Okay. Yesterday, um, all right. I had a baseball game. Yeah. I had a out flowers game. to all the mothers. Cool right? beans. All right, here you go. Hand out. Let's go down the aisles. Come on. Let's go down this way. That's okay. It's hopeful. It's hopeful. <laughs> okay. Go, go hand out your flowers here. All right. Come on. You guys reach in the bucket and get them, okay? Because I can't. Got Over there. Okay. There you go. Here, take two. Take two. Ah, this one's so big. I know. They're all so big. Man. Okay. Take two. There you go. Here you go. Oh, catch. <laughs> Boy, I love it when kids can get a little loud in church. You know, when I was a little boy, as soon as you walked through the doors of the sanctuary, you didn't say anything. And uh, I got in trouble one day for a man... I it was the first time I ever went to a Baptist church. I was in the Boy Scouts. And there was this little old man sitting at the far end of the pew, and the pastor was going, and the man says, Amen. I looked down at him, and I had never heard anyone speak out in church like that. Preacher went on a little bit longer. And then my man says, Preach it. And the third time he spoke out, I leaned over and I went, shh. <laughs> and my dad, who was sitting behind me, grabs me by the nape of the neck and hauls me out. And I said, but dad, he's talking in church. It was just something I never grew up with. But anyway, I'm so glad that the kids felt comfortable in, in being able to enunciate Happy Mother's Day. Our uh, scripture lesson today is taken from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. And this is how we know that we love the that we that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out His commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep His commands. 
and His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is the one who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and the blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. This is the Word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, fill us with your Spirit in this time of listening that we would hear your truth, that we would know your truth, and that we would act upon your truth in ways that the world will see and respond to. Uh, and so we thank you. I pray, Lord, that I would only be your servant to deliver this word in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of you might wonder what I do to prepare for a sermon each week. Well, you know, I, I pray and I read and I read and I pray and I pray and I read a little bit more and I do some research and I try to find things. I try to learn myself things that I didn't know before. I have that number right there. I did not know that before this week. I did not know that number before this week. And right now that, that number might just seem a little odd to you. But I... I work through the sermon preparation, and then I sit down and I go over hundreds of photographs just to find the right pictures to put up on these slides. And I, I get them and I send them to Becky. Now, God bless Becky Essek because she gets these photographs at 9.30, sometimes 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. And, uh, but I can't really do them until I know where the sermon's going. So I have to, to find the right photograph. I have to maybe put the right caption into it. But I have learned something since being here at Bethesda. I have learned how to crop. Okay? I'm not talking about gardening, James. I have learned how to crop my photographs, the pictures, to cut out the things that... I don't want in there and, and how to expand a little bit and do things. I'm, I'm becoming, oh man, dare I say, a computer artist. Ooh, scary. But you know, what cropping does is cropping narrows down the big picture. It, it allows us to focus in on other things of detail that we want to focus on. But sometimes we need to see the bigger picture, don't we? For instance, how many commandments are there? Ten commandments? Well, what's that? 613 commandments. In the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bible, they have what they call the mitzvah or the mitzvot if you're talking about in the pluralities. The mitzvah are the commands of God. So in the Torah, which is uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, no, that's the gospel. The Torah is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The first five books, you may have heard it called the Pentateuch. The first five books of the Bible is the Torah. And in the Torah contains the mitzvah, the commands of God, the commandments of God. And there are 613. Now, here's what I want you to do, because I don't have a slide that shows all 613 of them. But they're there. And if you look at the, uh, just Google 613 commandments, it will give you the mitzvah. And, and it's quite extensive. Um, but again, when we look at the broader picture, you know, we can look at Ten Commandments, but the mitzvah 
expands on them in, in how to live. Okay, and, and God wants us to see the broader picture because it's the broader picture that tells the truth of what God is, of who God is, and what God's will is for us in our life. You see, oftentimes when we crop things down, when we narrow the focus down, we don't see the big picture. And just to give an illustration of that, the, the tallest mountain in North America is Mount McKinley, Denali. And it wasn't climbed, at least recorded. The climbing of Mount McKinley was not recorded until... Uh, a fella named he's in here somewhere Mr. Cook I can't remember his first name and I can't find his name right here right now but I want to say John Cook but anyway he says he was the first one to climb it but he has no proof but a picture now, a picture's worth a thousand words, but here again, I think he may have been the first person ever to crop a picture. Because what they found out is when they got the original picture, he's got a picture of him standing on the summit of something, and they see his footprints going up to it. But when they find the original picture, they find in the background are mountains higher than the peak that he is standing on. So how could he have climbed to the summit of Mount McKinley and there be mountains higher than him in the background? And it was found out that in 1909, it was discovered that he had, in fact, fabricated his story. Yeah. He made it appear that he had climbed that mountain, but he didn't. And I think sometimes that we, we look at what we know in Scripture, and we can look into Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, and we can say, those are the Ten Commandments of God given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Absolutely. That would be absolutely right. There are 10 commandments, but there are 613 commandments in the Hebrew Scriptures. All throughout Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those four books. Genesis is the book of creation, the, the book of civilization being established. There's no law given there. And, G, and John says in our lesson today that the commandments of God are not burdensome. Are you kidding? I've got to obey 613 commandments? I can't remember that much. That's a lot. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, can you name the Ten Commandments in their order? A lot of people can't. A lot of people say, I struggle to find, you know, to remember all ten. Thou shalt not steal. Well, I think so. Is it one? Yeah, it's one. Okay, but how do you remember 613? When I was a child, my phone number when I lived in Kansas City began with a word. South. South 3, 4207. It was assumed that human beings didn't have the capacity to remember seven numbers. Now, I don't know what the S, the, the South means in numbers. All I, I, I don't know. But I remember 4207. And when I moved to Chicago, my phone number was 5959061. I could remember, whoa, seven numbers. I couldn't tell you today what the area code was. I don't know. But I can tell you the area code here, and I can tell you my phone number here. That's ten numbers. 
I'm getting better. But 613 commandments, that seems like an awful lot. Can you remember the 613 instructions your mom and dad gave you when you were little girls? No. Can you remember the chores that you were supposed to do once a week? No. <laughs> I couldn't either. But you know, God has commands for his people. And he, he made those commands so that we would have a guide to live by. Now, they weren't all do not do this. In fact, 248 of those commands were do this command. And 365 were do not do this commands. But those mitzvot commands, those Hebrew commands of God, they guided ancient Israel. And, and we live in life today a lot based on those guidelines, based on those commands. Societies today are constructed around the commandments of God because it gives us an ordered society. It gives us ways in, in which to deal with persons who disagree with us or whom we disagree with so that we don't fall into an anarchy of the strongest rule, the weakest. The commands of God were good. They are good. They served Israel well, and they serve us well also. The commands of God to Israel and us, they were good until, until human beings got involved, and decided to make them new and improved. We found a way to mess them up. We sure did. We found a way to, to imbalance them. To corrupt the 613. But there's two that can't be corrupted when we look at them in the fullness of what Jesus is talking about. And what are those two? To love God with your entire being and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those two can never be overwhelmed by those 613 or those that were instituted to corrupt those 613. In the purity of the mitzvah, the commands, God tells His people and us to love God and to love others, to cast out any and all other gods, and to not establish idols or create graven images to false gods. We are not to embarrass others. We're not to oppress the weak. To speak poorly of others. To bear a grudge. Or to seek revenge. The Hebrew nation was not to go outside of the camp on the Sabbath day so that they wouldn't be tempted to go out and reap manna from heaven, which would be rancid. But what did human beings do? Human beings got that, and, and the priests and the Pharisees and the, and the rulers of the temple, they corrupted the law. They said, you shall not walk more than 300 steps on the Sabbath. They corrupted that command of God that says, you shall not go out of the camp to saying, you shouldn't go but so far in walking because that would be work. That you shouldn't pull your beast out of a ditch if it got there. That the beast would just have to suffer there and perhaps die there 
if it happened on the Sabbath. They began, they became too legalistic and they forgot the spirit that God put in those commands. The spirit to love. The spirit that says, honor God first. But when we remember the bigger picture about the commands of God, we have to remember what are they there for? Well, they're there to reveal to the goodness of God's holy character. In fact, the first command of the mitzvah is to believe there is a God. That God exists, that God is. That's the first command. There is God. And the mitzvah was established. The commands were established so that we would always know there is God. They were put in place by God, this is the second part, to set apart the nation of Israel you got to remember this nation of Israel coming out of Egypt was going into a wilderness, was going into uh, uh, an area of pagan societies, godless societies. And they were going to be an organized and an orderly people of God, Yahweh. And they were going to be different than the societies that were in place. And in Exodus chapter 19, it is said, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Even while the whole earth is mine, God said, even though the whole earth is his, Israel will be his treasured possession as long as they are obedient to the commands of God. And that's God's promise to them. And the third part is to reveal the sinfulness, the sinfulness of man. See, until these commandments, humanity had no definition of what was sinful. Well, they lived by a code, perhaps, a moral code, perhaps, but it was a limited code, perhaps. This defines it. This establishes it. This sets it in place solidly. But the the law of God did not provide for salvation. No one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. And only man can take what God has delivered to us that was balanced and make it unbalanced. To corrupt the just into injustice. And what was established to set us free to be a binding agent of oppression. What God provided for forgiveness through the sacrifice offerings that we'll see in Leviticus chapters 1 through 7, what God provided for forgiveness Human hands got a hold of it and corrupted it for oppressive purposes. And we see where the leaders of the temple began to enrich themselves. God provided a way for his people to worship and praise him through regular worship and seasonal festivals and feasts. But humans made it a place to place barriers between God and His people. God provided direction for the physical and spiritual health of a nation. 
but human beings brought upon the nation the ways of its destruction. And God revealed to humanity through the mitzvah that everyone falls short. That's what sin is. We fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short of God's holiness. And we find in, when we fall short of God's holiness, we find that humanity has corrupted what God has made good, then we find that there are burdens and there are chains that bind us, that hold us down, that do not allow us to praise God as we should, that cage us, if you will, that restrain us. Rather than to be set free as God has intended us to be, not free to sin forever and ever, but free to choose to love God. It's through the corruption of man's new and improved version of the commands of God that there is nothing other than burdens and bondage and suffering. When we corrupt what God has done and we only want to see what, what we can do, what we are going to do on, in our own will, for our own purpose, for our own selfishness, for our own natures, then you know, that is when we are burdened and held down. In his letter to the church, John is telling the people that to deny Christ, and this is what John is writing this letter about, by the way, if, if, you, if you don't know, if you don't remember, if I forgot to tell you. There are those people, those false teachers that John is having to deal with, that the church is having to deal with, who have told them that Jesus, the Christ, is not the divine Son of God, that the Son of God would never have come down from heaven in a human form, that who they saw was an apparition. It was not a man. And that is a false teaching because the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, is the Son of Man, the Son of Mary, the Son of Joseph. And He came down as a human being, fully human but fully divine, both natures combined in one, inseparable. There's a word for that, but I'm not going to say it. The hypostatic union, that's what it is. To where Jesus, the divine nature, and the human nature cannot be separated. But they're both there. But there are people there who are saying no. Jesus was never human. And he was. Jesus had every human characteristic except sin that you and I have. Jesus suffered temptations. Jesus suffered pain. Jesus suffered sorrow. Jesus laughed and Jesus loved. Now it was not Eris. It was not an erotic love. But Jesus had love. It's an agape love. Because we know that Jesus laid down his life so that we might live. Jesus died upon a cross and was buried in a tomb 
so that we might have eternal life. Jesus bore the burden of our sin so that we might be lifted up sinless to stand before God, to be judged by God through grace in Jesus Christ. And that is what we have when we have faith in Jesus Christ. We have faith that God will redeem us. God will renew us. I love this picture. That little boy. I can see inside of him a heart that is set free. It is through the love of God and through faith in Christ Jesus that we will set our sights on the bigger picture and set our hearts upon the desire to obey the commands of God. For John tells us that God's commands are not burdensome. They cannot be a burden if they lift us up if they free us from the burdens of sin. The commands of God are a source of that freedom. The commands of God are there to set us free. Maya Angelou wrote a book I know why the caged bird sings and in the book is you know she talks about her life but she, Here's a, a verse from her poem. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on a distant, distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The caged bird sings of freedom, even though in the circumstances of his life, the caged bird is held within, he still has a freedom in his heart, a freedom in his soul, that he can sing of freedom unfettered, unbound, as unbound as that little boy is singing, as unbound as that little boy's heart is lifted up as unbound as I hope yours and my heart will be when we sing to the Lord our God as well. When we say, thank you, Jesus, each and every day that we're alive. In the commands of God, there are no burdens binding us, but there is a victory of freedom finding us. By faith unburdened of the world's traces, my soul set free by love's amazing graces. Yes, how beautiful are the feet that bring good news. Unburdened and free to sing we are. And what shall we sing? when the commands of God have freed us from the burdens of our sins. What phrase shall we sing but free at last? Free at last. Thank you, Jesus. I am free at last. Go and sing. Sing to the world that song of amazing grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, Lord God, I may not be able to carry a tune in a bucket, but Lord, fill my heart with the song of grace. Lord, fill my heart with the notion of praise that I would praise you, Lord, for my salvation, for you have redeemed me of my sin. You have reclaimed me as your son. And you have said, Lord, I am free. By your grace, by your mercy, through faith in Jesus, 
we are free. Glory be to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. Would you stand? It is so good to see you all again this morning. To those who have returned, we thank you, we love you, and, 
and we're so glad that you're able to be here with us. And, and again, if you have thought about coming back, please come. Uh, we have plenty of room. Uh, but also, too, if you're impelled to, to stay at home, we understand. Uh, but please tune in and watch and praise God with us. And as we go forth from here today, let us go forth with words of appreciation in our heart and upon our lips saying thank you to moms everywhere. Thank you, Mom, for giving us life. Thank you. And as we go forth from here, let us also be thankful to God our Father. For it is the gift of life created, delivered by Mom, that God has made us, and we are precious to Him. So precious that He would send His Son to save us. Oh, what a gift that God has given. May we cherish that gift. And may we share that gift today and every day. Go forth and be a blessing. Go forth and invite a friend, a neighbor, a stranger to come to worship with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, depart in peace. Amen.